Good morning, Newport. Steve introduced himself, welcomed me as the next guest pastor here at Newport. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Edie, and I've been gone, and I'm so sorry that I've been gone during the month of November. I traveled a lot. I went down to Tempe, Arizona, where I enjoyed 80 degree weather and time with my son. Then I came home and did laundry, and I went to Kentucky, and in Louisville, I enjoyed 80 degree weather. And then two days later, it snowed. I guess that happens in Kentucky. Then I came home and did laundry and went and spent time in uh, Suquamish area near Indianola and then enjoyed Thanksgiving in Union on uh, Hood Canal. So uh, I'm back and it's, there's still snow on the ground. So we went from 80 to, to snow on the ground. I wanna welcome you who are worshiping with us in the sanctuary this morning. If you are uh, new uh, visiting today, a special welcome to you. We've got some welcome bags in the uh, narthex that you're welcome to grab. And welcome to those who are joining us online. And so I'm just gonna have everyone turn around and wave at the clock. <laughs> and then everyone at home wave back. We are in the midst of our Advent season. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. The theme today is peace. And so I just want to extend the peace of Christ to each and every one of you. We have a few announcements this morning. Um, one is that today I am taking folks to lunch. If you'd like to join us, those who might be interested in a little bit more information about Newport. Um, I picked Red Robin down there at Factoria. I hope that that wasn't just a, a spoof on Google, that there really is a Red Robin in Factoria. I'm getting some nods that indeed there is. Um, we said noon, but we'll probably be down there a little bit earlier, but please uh, come and join us. Um, and then just to give you all a heads up so you can update the calendars in your phone, um, Christmas Eve service, which will include communion and include candlelight, is at four o'clock this year. One four o'clock service, please come and join us. And then on Christmas Day, which is Sunday, the session decided that we will not be hosting worship that day. And so uh, we can all stay home with our families and do some of our Christmas traditions, but there will not be a worship service here on December 25. And then if you're curious about New Year's Day and things like that, stand by, we'll let you know. Um, there's many ways for you to be involved in the life and ministry of Newport, so we hope that you'll take a look at the newsletter. If you do not get that by email, let us know or go to our website and take a look at all the ways to be involved. Now at this time, I am gonna invite um, the candle lighters to come up um, as we sing hymn 85, verse two. Advent, we listen for the word of peace. We listen for stories where people stop hurting each other and start helping. We listen for words of peace from leaders, and we remember that Christ is Prince of Peace. We light this second candle for the peace we listen for, that signs in our heart that God's reign is near. Please join us in the reading in unison our call to worship. Come. 
Come quickly, Shalom. Teach us how to prepare for a gift that compels us with justice to care. Our spirits are restless till sin and war cease. One candle is lit for the reign of God's peace. Amen. Next, I would like to invite everyone to stand to sing our very joyful opening hymn, two verses of Come, Thou Long Expected Jesus. Check one, two. Do we have any young disciples today? Come on up and join me. Back at it, huh? Well, let's go here. Let's gather around the communion table. Today I wanted to talk about power. What are some of the things you think of when you think of the word power? Army, Navy, Air Force. Military, definitely. Leaders with power have the ability to wage war. Any other ideas about power? God. What, what is different between the military's power and God's power? What do you think? Um, the military, Navy, and Air Force, they fight to save lives, and God just loves. Ah, so God's power is love, right? What does, what does love mean to you? Lots of stuff, right? It's hard to pin it down. Well, today, our scripture readings talk about the power of God being justice, being inclusive, peace, and security for all. And that's, that's the way God kind of inverts our understanding of power. It's not about kings and rulers and leaders. It's about love and all-inclusive love. And one of the ways that we celebrate that is with communion. What does communion mean to you? Sharing with one another. Sharing with one another. And that's power, right? There's power in sharing. And it's the kind of power that heals and transforms, as opposed to, say, the military, which we don't need to get into that right now. <laughs> Would you like to pass the peace of Christ with me? 
May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Let's, let us share the peace of Christ together.
There we go. You know, I just leave for a few days and they changed everything up here. <laughs> but I want to thank the choir and Chris for bringing Lohauer Rose into our worship this morning. It's always been a favorite carol for me. But after studying the scriptures for today's passage, uh, even more meaning. Um, that this is, the, this is the shoot that comes from the lineage of uh, Jesse. Uh, David's father's name is Jesse. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Would you pray with me, please? As we prepare to hear your word for us today, Lord, we ask that you would speak to us, that you would speak to us in our waiting and in our watching, of Advent, in our hoping and longing, in the sorrow places, in our sighing, and also in our rejoicing. Speak to us through this word in these Advent days and walk with us until the day of your coming. Amen. Two scripture passages, both of them from the prophets. Today we're looking at the songs of the prophets. The first nine verses from Isaiah 11 and then from Micah 5, verses 2, 3, and 4. But on this humbled ground, a tiny shoot, hopeful and promising, will sprout from Jesse's stump. A branch will emerge from his roots to bear fruit. And on this child from David's line, the spirit of the eternal one will alight and rest. By the spirit of wisdom and discernment, he will shine like the dew. By the spirit of counsel and strength, he will judge fairly and act courageously. By the spirit of knowledge and reverence of the eternal one. He will take pleasure in honoring the eternal. He will determine fairness and equity. He will consider more than what meets the eye and weigh in more than what he's told. So that even those who can't afford a good defense will nevertheless get a fair and equitable judgment. With just a word, he will end wickedness and abolish oppression. With nothing more than the breath of his mouth, he will destroy evil. He will clothe himself with righteousness and truth the impulse to right wrongs will be in his blood. With unwavering steps and integrity uncompromised, he will establish peace. A day will come when the wolf will live peacefully beside the wobbly kneed lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and yearling, newborn and slow, will rest secure with the lion and a little child will tend them all. Bears will graze with the cows they used to attack. Even their young will rest together, and the lion will eat hay like gentle oxen. Neither will a baby who plays next to a cobra's hole, nor a toddler who sticks his hand into a nest of vipers suffer harm. All my holy mountain will be free of anything hurtful or destructive. Far as the waters fill the sea, the entire earth will be filled with the knowledge of the eternal. And then from Micah. But you, Bethlehem of Ephratah, of the clans of Judah, are no poor relation. From your people will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel, whose origins date back to the distant past, to the ancient days. So God will abandon Israel only until the now laboring mother gives birth, and then those of his people who survive will be gathered back together with the rest of Israel. And he will stand and feed his flock in the power of the Eternal One with the majesty of the name of the Eternal, his true God. And they will live in safety, for his greatness will extend to the farthest parts of the earth. May God add God's blessing to this, God's holy word. So I woke up to the sound of a seagull. You guys know that's the only impersonation I know how to do, right? <laughs> 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 
sounded just like that. It's the day after Thanksgiving. Hmm. I know it sounds strange, but it was like a clarion, you know, it was, it was wanting to call attention to anyone who would hear. The household was still sleeping. My children were upstairs. But I came and looked into the eye of this creature and tried to see what he was so excited about. And it was this foil pan that was still sitting on the deck, filled with the grease of our Thanksgiving bird. There was something about his excitement that amused me, and I marveled at how innate within him or her, I don't know, it was some sort of primal understanding that when he finds something of worth that he has to bark, he has to call out or sing about it in order to invite others into this special knowing. Again, I know it sounds strange, but I experienced in my waking and my hearing and in my seeking and finding this strange call to worship. There was something worth barking about, something worth waking to discover, something worth another look and an invitation to participate. And then I set on thinking for the next 48 hours about how my time together with my children was like a worship service. And there was song, and there was offerings, and there was communion, and there was blessing, and there were prayers. I pondered about the week my family had just spent together, traveling from all over the country to be together to celebrate the life of their dad's twin brother, to see cousins, to eat pancit and adobo and lumpia, and tell stories about their uncle, to honor his love of music and how he shared that love with his brothers, with all of us. I made custom guitar picks with his picture on them for everyone to take home, a picture of him holding his favorite guitar, knowing that he was now singing bluegrass and gypsy jazz with the angels until we could join him again in an eternal sing-along. Our Thanksgiving dinner was small this year. Their aunt was grieving in the next county north. A beloved cousin decided to go and be with her and their dad three states away and their uncle there only in memory. It was hard for all of us, but it was also beautifully peaceful as well. So like the prophets of old, I wrote a song. Seagulls call to glorify there's a feast. Come, come. Thanksgiving rituals bring comfort and joy. Celebrate both old and new, abiding with the now and the now gone. The familiar is or feels like family. Heart and mind meld and merge over meals. The young nodding to the old lands like belonging in the heart. They already know how to bring the offering of themselves, of their gifts, of their love. Prayers are offered in a moment, yet a moment that transcends time. And like the canal waters lap the shore, the eternal laps, the temporal topography, our surroundings offer solid scaffolding and the sound of resounding joy. Yet we also revel in the thin spaces between always will be and almost gone, between heaven's sky and earth water, between the Cascades and the Olympics, between what we think we know and what we know we have still to learn and still to unlearn. So we raise a glass and praise the communion that we know in union our smiles reflect our knowing we are known. Our laughter reflects our loving that we are beloved. Still missing those that taught us well, we are satisfied that we have been fed. Still grieving the songs unsung, we are grateful that we no longer thirst. We go and tell, often and well, the stories of thanksgiving, the stories of love. During the season of 
Advent, we are looking at and listening to the songs that well up with, within us and they, they burst out to proclaim the heart of God, to bless our souls, to bless our spirits, to bless our children, and to bless the world. The sermon series is based on the songs of Advent and Scripture. It's called Sing Comfort, Sing Joy. Not just an imperative for the holidays, but an imperative for each of us every day. Words, lyrics, the music that harmonizes the longings deep within us and the promises of God's Spirit. Last week you heard from Zechariah who offered a song about the birth of his son, John, who would prepare a way for God's messenger, Jesus, who is the fulfillment of promises and prophecy of a God whose love is steadfast, always faithful. Zechariah's song is a song of hope. And today we listen to the prophet's songs, which like my own, provide a chorus of peace, even in the midst of personal discord and social disorder. The image of a wild beast resting peacefully next to a lamb has been a common poetic image of the promised utopia and a peace that passes all understanding. Sometimes we are the lion or the bear, and we must set aside our power and our thirst for control. Sometimes we are the lamb that resigns to be powerless against oppressive forces. Yet in the mind of Christ, in the heart of God, in the power and wisdom of the Spirit, we know that equity and peace is not only the promise of our God and the song of the prophets, but it is also the calling of every man, every woman, every child to be agents of change, heralds of hope, and channels of peace. Next week, we will listen for the song that belongs to the daughter of God, who is also the mother of God. A song of joy referred to for generations as the Magnificat, because a young woman named Mary asked her own soul to find a way to magnify the Lord, for not only bringing joy to her, but to her people, and for bringing joy to the whole world. And then just a mere week later, we will listen to the songs heralded by the angels, announcing that love will be born again into a world longing to meet God face to face. And then the heavenly chorus will be received and repeated by the tenor voices of the shepherds. Songs of hope, songs of peace, songs of joy, songs of love. These are the songs of faith. These are the songs of Advent. These are the, the songs that well up inside old men and young women and prophets and angels and shepherds and even seagulls. Songs that have been written down with iterations and put to music and poetry for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. They are played and sung and even hummed by our own children in church in shopping malls, in corporate elevators, TV commercials, and Hallmark movies, and doctor offices. Messages of hope and peace, joy and love that still invite each of us to write our own iterations for new gatherings, for new contexts, for new port. For our own hearts to compose songs of faith this Christmas, to bless our souls, to bless our spirits, to bless our children, to bless the world. So Newport, let us sing comfort and sing joy. Today's scripture, the lyrical words of the prophets, offer us an image of peace. And we hear it in verses 6 through 9 of Isaiah 11. Eugene Peterson in the message puts it this way, the wolf will romp with the lamb, the leopard sleep with the baby goat. 
Calf and lion will eat from the same trough, and a little child will tend them. Cow and bear will graze the same pasture. Their calves and cubs grow up together, and the lion eats straw like the ox. The images are peace on earth, depicted in a lot of art including Christmas cards, and maybe you've seen it, the image of the lion and the lamb. They're even portrayed with an angel sitting with them. Or at the manger with the Christ child, you see a lamb and a lion. There's even a picture of St. Nicholas carrying a lion and a lamb and a bag of treasures door to door. Can you imagine your Amazon driver showing up at your house with a lion and a lamb? <laughs> but I wonder if the truth and the depth of this image is lost on us. What does it mean to have a lion and lamb curling up to one another under a Christmas tree or a starry night or a banner that says peace on earth? You know, I remember pondering over a final assignment in my class called Christian Ethics in Seminary. And I was trying to determine the most ultimate dark spirit that was lurking over the earth, threatening the peace of God from permanently permeating the world. And I finally concluded that all evil could be explained by one prominent spiritual entity, and that was the spirit of dominion. I didn't know it was a thing. I thought I was the first person on earth to come up with it. But there was something about dominion. Dominance seems to be a driving force behind all social ills, all disorder, all corruption, all broken relationships, injustice, inequity, domestic violence, and world conflicts. Dominance, power over another. It includes the rules that determine who was in and who was out, who was more than and who was less than, who was right and who was wrong, who was safe and who was not, how we determine the haves and the have-nots. This is the spirit of the first serpent. This is the spirit that tempted Christ in the desert. This is the spirit that threatens today even all of us privilege and power and prestige and position, we have learned all so well how this is the currency of this world. But they have never been the currency of God. The dominance of dominance is at the center of our own Genesis story. It explains the conflicted relationship between humans and God, between men and women, and brother against brother. What makes the message of peace so integral in the day of the prophets, as well as in the day of Putin, is the promise of eventual equilibrium in an age of dominance and evil. Story after story of a battle for dominance is depicted throughout our ancient scriptures in the Old Testament and in the New, and most of our history books, at least those that tell the truth. And I know that some people are critical of critical race theory, but it is essential that we are honest about the dominance of dominance in all of our stories. Stolen land, stolen labor, stolen lives, this is our story. Yet there is more to the story. There is good news. There are good tidings of comfort and joy. There's a message of peace. The life and ministry of Jesus, the Christ child, addresses the evils of dominance among all of us human siblings, for all of us given life by the one who spoke the world into existence and put the first breath into the first human. When Jesus spoke, it was this same breath, this same voice, this same spirit, and the same wisdom. When the disciples argued over who would sit at his right or left, Jesus said, stop it, I am peace. When the sons of thunder wanted to bring down lightning to destroy the crowd, Jesus said, stop it, I am peace. 
when elders in the religious community wanted to stone a young girl trapped in a political foil, Jesus said, stop it. I am peace. When the crowd wanted to blame parents for their son's blindness, Jesus said, stop it. I am peace. And today, when the religious elite, and that can be on the far right as well as the far left, want to draw attention to themselves or claim special knowledge or privilege above their Christian siblings or quote scripture to shame or condemn the beloved children of God, Jesus still says, stop it. I am peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus continually called out the dominance of dominance as evil. Position, power, privilege, prestige are all aspirations of and currency of the empire, which is why we pray your kingdom come, your will be done every Sunday. Because inclusion, not dominance, has always been inerrant to the spirit of Christ, to the one we call eternal love. So today we sing a song of peace. And the image we have been offered is a lion and a lamb. But although this image is in your Hallmark Christmas card, it is actually not in the Old Testament. And it is not in Isaiah 11:6. We just hear about strong animals lying down with weak creatures. We don't specifically hear about the lion laying down with the lamb. But the image of the lion, the lamb, is ascribed to Jesus in Revelation 5. The Christ figure is both the lion, a symbol of strength, and the lamb, a symbol of meekness. Jesus gave his life in many ways and is often compared to a sacrificial lamb, but Jesus also reigns over death and has the power and strength as a lion. It's in Revelation 5, verses 5 and 6, that we hear the echo of Isaiah. We hear about air, a flower blooming, a shoot from Jesse. The scene is no one is worthy to break the scroll. And someone cries out. And one of the elders says, stop weeping. Look there, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. He has conquered and is able to break its seven seals and open the scroll. And then the voice says, I looked, and between the throne and the four living creatures and the 24 elders stood a lamb who appeared to have been slaughtered. The lion and lamb together is still an image of peace, but it is the melding and merging of the essences of both creatures that we might better understand Jesus as the Prince of Peace. The peace that passes all understanding is complex for the very reason that it encompasses both power, and humility. Friends, it is the mind of Christ. It is the heart of God. It is the power and wisdom of the Holy Spirit that we find both divine power and sacred humility. Christ is the lion. Christ is the lamb. This is our song of peace sung by the prophets and the angels and the shepherds and Zechariah and Mary and you and me and seagulls. All of us heralds of peace. All of us channels of peace. All of us agents of peace. And all of us singers of peace. Amen and amen.
Excuse me, I thought a hymn was next. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the spirit of wisdom to rest upon us, a spirit of understanding and knowledge. Grant us to live in harmony. Let us pray for God's steadfastness to gird our spirit. May peace prevail like lamb and wolf. Grant us to live in harmony. Let us pray for voices crying out in the wilderness, women living in fear, children hiding. Grant all a place of harmony. Let us pray, repent of harm done to the innocent, clear the chaff of abuse and hurt, bear the spirit of harmony. At this time, you are welcome to say either silently or aloud names of those the Spirit has put on your heart and mind. Let us pray for the God of hope, joy, and peace to fill all hearts. One voice glorify, God, prepare the way. Let us now pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, out of gratitude for all that we have been provided, we continue in our worship this morning by sharing our gifts, tithes, and offerings. <coughs> If you are visiting with us today, please do not feel obligated to give, as today you are our guests. Ushers, please come forward. Would you pray with me, please? Generous and loving God of peace, we ask that you would use these gifts to help us join you in clearing a holy space where hurt and destruction have no place. Clear our lives of hatred and despair, sow seeds of joy and peace that shoots of hope may spring forth and that we may live in harmony with one another. Amen.
Holy God, we give thanks for your creation, fragile yet fruitful, enough for all. We give thanks that you call us into community where love and justice may flourish, enough for all. And we give thanks that you invite us on this Advent journey, awake and curious, longing to meet you. We set out for your table of grace. You light our path one step at a time, beckoning us onto a way that offers us new eyes to explore the vision of the promised one, new senses to feel the heartbeat of the vulnerable one, new courage to share the urgency of the ruler of peace. One more step, one more stretch, one more challenge takes us deeper into the mystery of your abundant life, a world healed, renewed, all nature, all people at peace. We give you thanks for sending us the one called Emmanuel, God with us, whose story has become for us the way to find you, to know you, to join you in creating a new heaven and a new earth. We remember the night when Jesus gathered at the table with his friends in a time of struggle, in a time of fear, and he took bread he blessed it, and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body. And after supper, in a similar way, Jesus looked forward to the day of joy and power, and he took the cup. And he gave thanks. And he said, take this, all of you, and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant, my life poured out. I will drink this with you again in the reign of God. Share this bread and this cup and remember me. Come now, Holy Spirit of God, as you were present at creation, be present with us now. And let these gifts of bread and cup become for us the bread of life and the cup of blessing. As you were sent by Jesus to accompany us on our journey of faith, be present now and transform this community, sharing this bread, this cup, into one body in Christ. Amen. At this time, I'll invite our servers to come forward. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Holy One, we have met you at this table, nourished by your holy food. Send us out now as one people, full of vision and courage to prepare your way. Filled with your grace, show us how to live so that all may know your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the child king, the prince of peace. Amen. Dear people in the congregation, in uh, trying to select music that's contemporary, what we call praise songs, contemporary praise music, very, very seldom do you find music that is really centered on the themes of Advent. And I felt very lucky to find this new song. It's a new song. It came out just last year in Make Away, uh, solidly uh, based on Advent scripture. And I'd like to uh, invite you all to stand to sing this uh, really joyful Advent praise song. Thanks again for being here this morning so that we could lift up songs of peace for one another. Hear now our benediction, our blessing, our commission for this week. Friends, we sing with angels, setting the roadways and the buildings humming as people who are being changed. We go into a world that is being changed, ready to share the good news that the long expected Jesus is coming, that we are being freed from whatever binds us, 
Glory be to God, who walks with us, sings with us, and struggles with us each and every day. Amen and amen. Thank you.